Hey YouTube, this is Fu312, and I am also back from the National. Uh, just like a lot of you guys, I've been catching up on everyone's videos, kind of seeing uh, you know, pretty much what everybody picked up over there, their whole experience. Uh, just kind of seeing you know, the overall experience of how this National compared from the previous one in 2019 uh, to the one that happened uh, right now for 2021. So the National, uh, boy, it was, it was a lot bigger than the 2019. I definitely noticed uh, right away, as soon as you walk in, I, I mean, you kind of, you, you hear the, the loud chatter. Um, you know, you see all the, all the people walking around uh, with their Pelican cases. Uh, things I noticed this year, I did notice that there was a lot of the, the crowd was actually younger. Uh, something that, you know, in 2019, I, I took no notice of. Not only that, but... Um, I also saw more women in the audience, so I'm sure a lot of guys or uh, husbands, they brought their girls or girlfriends, wives, whatever. Uh, but pretty much for me, I attended on Thursday and I left Saturday afternoon. So I woke up early Thursday and uh, got on a plane, hopped over, landed about like 9.30 uh, a.m. And I think I was at the show by about maybe 10.45, maybe 11 or so. Uh, so I get in as I'm walking in, I'm uh, speaking to Josh, rated rookie, and he tells me just pretty, he made a pretty good purchase actually. So we, uh, we meet up real quick and he shows me a, a really nice uh, 51 Bowman Mantle, uh, I'm sorry, a 51 uh, Bowman Maze rookie that he picked up. Uh, he was super pumped up about it, so it was kind of nice to, to be there uh, right when he acquired that. Uh, I was walking through the show, pretty much my game plan was to kind of start in the back area, which is where the red carpet is. So it's kind of like when you walk in through National, you uh, make a right and you go all the way down. And this is, we're talking about like past uh, baseball card exchange, pass, pass by the tops booth. It's more kind of like by the PWCC area. And over there, they have a lot of uh, more of the shinier chrome stuff, refractors, things like that, because I was kind of looking for a card that was a, it's a modern card and I'll get to that here in a minute. But on my way over there, I ran to Filmington. Uh, he's also pumped up because he's showing me about his uh, reholdering that he just did with PSA. Uh, and that was in reference more to the, uh, was 1993 SP Dare Cheater. Um, I believe it was an older holder, so he went ahead and re-encapsulated that one. Came out really nice, by the way. Uh, the only thing was that he was kind of worried that maybe with a new grading standard, he, you know, you always, I guess, wonder that when he turns something in, is it going to, you know, are they going to lower the grade? Are they going to bump it down half a grade? But uh, no, it held its, its true nine. And I looked at it and it, it's actually, it is a really nice card. Uh, so yeah, so Thursday I kind of, I went around and uh, the first table I go to actually, it's funny because when I met up with Josh, rated rookie, um, I tell him what I'm looking for and he says, no, I haven't seen any. So I said, okay, I'm going to make my way towards the back. And right after I ran into Filmington, uh, the first table I go to, sure enough, the card I'm looking for, they have it in their uh, display case. And I look at it and, um, you know, I kind of noticed like maybe top to bottoms off a little bit, but it, it you know, I, I was like, you know, I just got here. This is the first one I'm looking at. Let me go ahead and continue looking around. So I, I walk around the floor and maybe I don't see this card for possibly about another two hours. And I saw it in someone else's di display case. Uh, same thing, uh, top to bottom. I mean, it's pretty close, but kind of on the card it had like some like little hair stick. I don't know, like when they cut it or whatever, but it's like some like little hair sticking out um, from the from the cardboard. It just kind of didn't sit right with me, so I opted to uh, to not get that one. And about maybe 45 minutes later, I came across another table, and they actually had two of those cards in their display case. Uh, right when I saw them, I was like, oh, wow, this, this one looks like it could be for me. So I went ahead and I looked at both of them very carefully, and uh, immediately I chose one over the other. So I tried to work out with a deal with a dealer. Uh, we got talking as, as far as you know numbers, and they were kind of close. Uh, basically, the, the card, um, you know, I, I was trying to get, it, of course, as low as I could, and he's trying to get as much as he could. So, uh, you know, pretty much he, he kind of lays an offer down the table. I was like, all right, I'll think about it. So I walk away, and I'm walking for about like 45 minutes. And uh, the difference was about $1,000, just so you know. So I'm, I'm walking for about 45 minutes, and, and I, I kind of feel like I've seen most of the showroom floor already. So I'm like, you know what? Am I really, you know, I flew down here, I got a hotel, I'm here for a few nights. Am I really gonna walk away from a card uh, for 40, you know, for, I'm sorry, for $1,000? For so, uh, yeah, I, I head back there and I asked him, you know, let me look at the card again. I look at it and uh, the sticker price on the card, it was, uh, well, I'll just show you the card first, okay? So it was the 2011 Topps Update Mike Trout, the Diamond Anniversary card. Um, just a card that I really wanted for, for some time now. And I actually got a funny story to tell about this card. Uh, 
so the sticker price on this card and and it was sixteen thousand uh, dollars the sticker price and also when I went to that first table they also had a sticker price of sixteen thousand as well and then I think the other table that I went to that um, again in the back of the card it kind of had like some like little hairy thing over here and and I kind of it didn't sit too well with me not that I thought anything was wrong with the card but it just kind of wasn't up to my 10 standards um, which I passed on they had a sticker price of 15 so I was kind of happy to see the 15 and 16 stickers at least because you know I guess these cards when earlier in the year when when things were kind of crazy uh, this card was over I, I believe it had uh, one or two sales over even thirty thousand dollars which I definitely wasn't going to pay $30,000. So now at least I kind of knew what people were pricing it for. And what I did was that I brought uh, 14000 cash to the show. Um, just something that I've been saving for about four to five months. So I kind of had that money put away. And even though I kind of felt like I was there with a 14000 I kind of knew that it might not be enough to close the deal. So I actually had another card um, that I had that I priced at 1000 And I brought it with me. So... The dealer, so going back to that dealer that had this card in the, uh, or the, the two of these cards in his showcase. So this is the one that I picked and I offered him, hey, you know, if I give you 13 uh, plus this card, would you take it? Which is valued at a thousand. So he looks at the comps and he's like, all right, you know, I'll comp this out a thousand, sure. But the thing was that he was like, well, you know, I, I, I bought this card for 15,000 and I kind of don't want to, you know, I, I at least want to make my money back, he's saying. And um, so he's like, you know, I'll do 14 cash plus the card. So I kind of hesitate, but I think about it for like about a minute or so. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. I'm here. And also, I, I mean, this card definitely exceeds my expectations as far as the centering goes. Uh, top to bottom, left and right is magnificent. The corners on this card also display really well. Let's see if I could zoom in there without, a, without it being blurry. So we went ahead and made the deal, and again, it was for 14 cash plus that $1,000 card. And uh, I was ecstatic, honestly, to own this. I, I mean, once I had it in hand, I, I didn't look back on this at all. So the thing about this card was that earlier, was it earlier? Or no, it was November of last year, I was looking to purchase this card. And I kind of started tracking it a little more towards the middle of uh, 2020. And I started tracking it a little more. When the card, I saw it noticing that it was moving in price between like seven, eight thousand, so, and I kind of kept on looking at it a little more, and then eventually the card went as high as about ten thousand, and I found a really nice copy on eBay, and uh, I went ahead and I offered up a price to seller, and he did not want to take anything less than eleven thousand on it, and uh, the card looked magnificent, just like this one, and I went ahead and I purchased it, and immediately, uh, you know, right when I received it in hand, I kind of was looking at it. And I kind of saw like around right here, so it had like these spider wrinkles. It, it would look kind of a little veiny. And I was like, what the heck is this? So the only person I know that has this card in the same grade was uh, Joe Silver Jackify. So I went ahead and I shoot him a text and I sent him a little video showing the uh, the little veins coming out of the spider wrinkles. And he looks at his and he says, yeah, mine, mine doesn't have that. So since I never held this card prior, I didn't know anything about it. So I went ahead and I, I contacted the seller and I told him I was going to return the card and of course he wasn't too thrilled about that. First thing he tells me is that he doesn't accept returns, but I know that eBay does accept returns. Uh, so I went ahead and returned the card back. It wasn't an issue, got the funds back. Uh, the crappy part was that at that time I paid 11 for it and for this one I had to pay 14 plus a thousand dollar card trade as well. So it really came out to a total of 15 even though that thousand dollar card I was into it for nothing. So I just kind of really see it as me. Uh, putting up 14 cash for this is what it was. Uh, so that was the only thing. And then also going back to a little veiny thing, for those who aren't familiar with this card, uh, there was another card that looked at the National as well. And it also kind of had a, a little veiny thing going on. And the way you can tell is you can kind of like, kind of look through it. And if you kind of see like some popping up, it, it looks like a spider wrinkle. I don't know if that's a common thing or not for the card, but I can tell you that I've seen about five in hand now. And out of those five, two did have those spider wrinkles. But uh, certainly the copy I was going to get was not going to have that because it just personally didn't feel like a, uh, a true 10 for me. But um, yeah, this one, like I said, I, I mean, I really do love this one. It, it's really a nice copy. It's something that, uh, that I really wanted. Um, unfortunately, I am priced out of the, uh, the Bowman Chromes, which I'm referring to the 2009 Bowman Chrome and even the Refractor, of course, which is even more. But I think the last Bowman Chrome sold for about like 50 I don't know if it was like, I think it was a refractor, it sold for like 58,000, I'm not sure. 
which probably means that the Bowman Chrome has to be between 25 and, and 35,000. You know, maybe could even be a little bit more. So with this card currently, I think the last sale on eBay was about 17,000. So it definitely has some upside to it. Not only that, I mean, Mike Trout, he just turned, how old is it? Let me see. August 7th. So he is about to turn 30 years old. Of course, right now is his injury. I'm hoping that once he comes back, uh, card values for this uh, in general will go back up. But aside from this, prior to me getting this card, a card that I was looking for initially, which, was, which I was going to go to National for, it was the was it the 2018 Tops Update uh, Ronald Acuna. So one of the white jersey, he's doing like the batting stands. The thing is about that card is like a pop of like 55, 55 or so in, in Gem Mint 10. It's a card that I was looking at uh, at the time I ended up going with the Sapphire, which I love the Sapphire card. Uh, beautiful card, super happy I got it, but I think the next one I, I wanted was the, uh, the SSP one for the 2018. So the thing was that, of course, Ronald Acuna was doing really good this year until about the time he got hurt, and of course, prices shot down. Now, that's not something that really scared me, but the thing was that I was just putting away money for about like four to five months, as you know, every time I got paid, uh, selling some things on the side, I was just basically just getting that cash and putting it into an envelope. And I kind of got more, you know, I, I kind of was able to save more than I thought, and I was like, you know what, let me just go for the 2011 Topps Update uh, Diamond card. Uh, if you're kind of wondering maybe why not this one, maybe the Cognac one, which has a pop of about 94 versus this one that, at, during the national had a pop of 299 and once i got back home then it had a pop of 300 so somebody uh recently just hit uh the lottery with this card as well um but the reason why i didn't go for the cognac is just because the cognac one I, it just doesn't appeal to me i, I kind of like the you know the the diamond look to this uh, the silver you know shiny borders beautiful card by the way too really nice looking card um so yeah, it's, it's kind of reason why I went with this one, even though it does have a higher pop, and collectors seem to kind of gravitate towards this one too. So in the future, I think that this one has a lot of potential. Uh, you know, Mike Trout probably has another good eight to 10 years of playing days left. He's definitely gonna hit 600 home runs. He's currently at 310. Um, first time ballot, or first time Hall of Famer, for sure. So I think that this is a good one to get, especially if I wait about maybe another year, two more years. This could definitely, uh, you know, be at some sort of level that, you know, I, I just won't be able to afford at that time. What's also kind of interesting was if you um, looking in terms of value for this card, and once again, I mean, I'm not trying to pump this card. This card speaks for itself. Everybody knows, uh, is familiar with the 2011 Topps Update card, so I really don't feel I need to, you know, to say go ahead and buy this card anymore. I mean, either you, you want it or you don't want it in your collection at this. You know, we all know, uh, you know, who Mike Trout is and what his cards do and you know, and, and the people who kind of keep questioning it, whether it's still gonna go up or they think with a 5,500 uh, pop count on the base card, it has no room to grow. I, I mean, you know, every time they get proven wrong because the card just continues to go up. So I think, uh, you know, the card is gonna continue to climb, of course, but going back to 2019 National, this card was actually, it was selling for about between 25 and 3,000. Again, that was two years ago, you know, and now, I, I mean, everybody has a price on eBay about like 18, 18,000 or so, so it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much as far as my pickups. Uh, for the National, again, very overwhelming. Had a great time, got to catch up with a lot of people. Um, but we did have a, we, the first night when I arrived there on Thursday, we had Mike's uh, get together, which was at the Embassy Suites, it was on the second floor. Uh, pretty cool, just kind of go there, hang out with everybody. I really like that one better than the Friday night. The Friday night was the uh, Pepino Man and the Filmington, um, was it like a show that the, you know we're kind of we're gonna meet at the Lowe's bar uh, of course ended up being like a massive trade night where uh, there had to be probably between 700 and a thousand people that end up showing up there so it kind of had a different vibe to that show I, I kind of like things a little bit more on the calmer side a little more quiet a little more personable um, so I guess in terms of that like that was the only kind of annoying thing about it even though it is kind of exciting to go there and and see so many new people into this hobby uh, just something I've never seen before. And the stuff that these kids are carrying these days is just insane. I mean, they have their Pelican cases and they just have cards that are worth, I, I don't know about tens of thousands of dollars, but I know that there was a guy who had like two Kobe cards there, like two rookies, and they were each valued at 30,000 each. And he just has like his little table set up on, on like a little, uh, or he has like his card set up like on a little table off to the, the hall. I mean, it's just, it's crazy just the amount, you know, the volume of cards that these kids have or the money tied into it. So um, 
but yeah, overall, I mean, the show was a success. Anyone who thinks otherwise, you know, they're just kidding themselves, to be honest. Um, and also between the, you know, kind of uh, seeing all that, it was, once again, this pretty nice catch up with, uh, you know, folks like Andy, she blind mirror refractors. I uh, had a nice conversation also with Scott, Scotty Tradition, caught up with Phil, Michael, uh, got to talk to Eric, Eric those back pages for a little bit. Uh, Dave, Blue Jacket 66, uh, Triple Crown uh, 24, JT. Who else? Uh, Jeremy, IPTTM, uh, Michael, Ed Westergriff. So it was awesome seeing you guys. Ron also, Ron Fig. And if I'm forgetting your name, I, I do apologize about that. I mean, it was really just so many people. Uh, they got interact, and unfortunately, the only downside was that there wasn't enough time. So, again, uh, I arrived Thursday, and I attended the show uh, on Saturday. I picked this up, by the way, on what was it Thursday? I think within like four hours of attending, I, I kind of really want to knock this out of the park, um, or I guess out of the way, I should say, uh, just so I can kind of enjoy the show more. And once I did, um, I felt, you know, I was kind of like at more at like kind of a relaxing state where I just kind of walked around, grabbed a couple of beers, just saw some cards, you know, made more time to catch up with fellow collectors. Uh, Saturday, just kind of, again, once, you know, once there, just kind of hung out, took my time, uh, walked around the show, flo show floor uh, room a little bit. And then on Saturday, I attended for, I don't know, maybe like three, four hours, and then I went up went out, got some lunch, and I caught my flight back home. So I was back home probably, uh, was it Saturday, by about 9 p.m. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I always say, I mean, if you've never been to National, definitely go there. It is an awesome experience. Uh, you're gonna have a great time. If you're a little nervous or hesitant going because you don't know anybody, uh, you know, go, you know, make some friends. If not, you know, it, all you gotta do is probably know one person that you're kind of familiar with on YouTube, and, and I'm sure they'll introduce you to the rest of the gang. So. Uh, it is fun. If you've never gone, uh, please think about going next year. Uh, it's definitely worth it. The only thing is that, you know, as far as the travel arrangements, you probably want to go ahead and, and probably reserve your hotel. I'm going to say maybe uh, starting as early as December and then probably by March. Anything by March, you're kind of pushing at that point. If not, you know, you might have to, to book something that might be like a mile away or so. So where I was staying was this Crown Plaza. It's about, I don't know, maybe like four minutes walking distance was not far at all. It's right across the street. Uh, so is the Embassy Suites, they're right next to each other. And it's a really convenient just to kind of get there. And f from the airport, you can catch a shuttle to take you right there, walk to the, um, the convenience, or I'm sorry, to the, um, uh, the, uh, the convention center. Not only that, there's places to eat all around within walking distance. And then once you're done, you can just catch um, the shuttle back to the uh, airport and call it a day. So really convenient. I love Chicago. I wish it was there every year. It kind of feels like a central place that everybody, no matter where you are in the States, uh, you know, it's pretty centralized that anyone could just pretty much drive, drive there for the most part. Uh, but other than that, that was my experience. I had a great time and uh, I hope to see everyone there again in uh, 2023, I'm going to say, because I don't believe I'm going to make it to the uh, Jersey one. Uh, it just doesn't appeal to me from what I've read, um, you know, as far as the airport being about like 45 or an hour. Uh, an hour away from the convention center. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching. If I forgot who you were, I, I do apologize. Um, again, there's just so many people that you run into. And um, thanks for watching.